A man veers into an oncoming traffic lane and causes an accident in a wooded area. Is he drunk or having a diabetic episode? Coming up next on the Men's Medical Moment. In 2021, 100,000 Americans died from diabetes. What can he have done to prevent this tragedy? What if we could turn back time? Warp the fabric of space back 25 years ago. When he was diagnosed and then ignored his doctor's warning to take it easy on his sugar intake. Or maybe back to the time in his history when he didn't get tired at the boxing practice to make him sleep the whole next day. There it is. There it is. Adolescence, the age that is the optimal target for monitoring your glucose levels. But salty snacks and sugar won't let us do this. Yes, those numbers at the lead end of the show are accurate. Over 100,000 people have died in the last couple of years, each of those years, from diabetes. The situation is so grim that the U.S. government is considering placing diabetes in the same category as other more lethal diseases such as cancer or the coronavirus. More than 133 million Americans are living with some form of diabetes. 37.3 million have some form of the disease. And a whopping 96 million have the precursors of prediabetes. Prediabetes is a serious health condition where blood sugar levels are higher than normal, but not high enough yet to be diagnosed as type 2 diabetes. Approximately 96 million American adults, more than 1 in 3, have prediabetes. So you have a 1 in 3 chances of getting it. But the problem is not that people get diabetes, but that they don't know how to avoid or manage its symptoms once you do. Now there are three main types of diabetes. Type 1, once considered as juvenile diabetes or insulin-dependent diabetes. Type 1 is a chronic condition in which the human pancreas produces little or no insulin and typically appears in adolescence, so more in childhood. For these particular persons, symptoms will include increased thirst, frequent urination, hunger, fatigue, and blurred vision. When your kidneys can't keep up with the excess glucose that's excreted into your urine, dragging along fluids from your tissues, which make you dehydrated eventually. This will usually leave you feeling thirsty. Now, here's the kicker. As you drink more fluids to quench your thirst, you'll urinate even more, exacerbating the problem. Now, treatment in this chronic cases will include maintaining a normal blood sugar level through regular monitoring, insulin, therapy, diet, and exercise. So mainly to help yourself is diet and exercise. Now type 2 diabetes is the most common form of diabetes in adults in America. Type 2 means that your body doesn't use insulin properly at all. With type 2 diabetes, your body either doesn't produce enough insulin or resist insulin. Now symptoms that manifest from the stage of illness include increased thirst, just like the first, frequent urination, hunger, fatigue, and blurred vision. In some cases, there may be no symptoms. Treatments include diet, exercise, medication, and insulin therapy. Now, there is one particular group that has diabetes more than others. Black Americans are more apt to transition to type 2 diabetes from type 1, and they are twice as likely as their white counterparts to develop type 2 diabetes by middle age. And those who get it are significantly more likely to suffer complications such as blindness, kidney disease, and amputations of a limb of the body. And the last, which is not numbered, is what is known as gestational diabetes, or what some women achieve during their pregnancy. Gestational diabetes is the diabetes diagnosed for the first time during pregnancy, or gestation, meaning over the course of a woman carrying a baby in her womb uh, to full term. Now, at that time, the blood sugar affecting the mother could be high. 
Gestational diabetes can affect a baby in the womb by making it grow too large or being born too soon. Those are two problems with gestational diabetes. Those who develop gestational diabetes are at a higher risk of developing type 2 diabetes later on in life down the road. Now, in most cases, there are no symptoms. A blood sugar test during pregnancy is used for diagnosis. Treatment strategies include a daily blood sugar monitoring, a health diet exercise, and monitoring the baby. Now, if blood sugar is too high, medication will be needed, even if the mom is pregnant. Now, in more serious cases of the disease, an individual can end up going into a diabetic coma if their sugar levels are too high or too low. In these cases, it is not advised that these persons drive a vehicle or operate heavy machinery, and that's not just a slogan on a bottle. I'll give you now one of the actual stories that bears this out. Michael Dodd's van veered into a direct path of a Citroen car driven by James Pope and Chester. Now, Chester is located in the United Kingdom, and this happened on the 12th of November 2009. This accident would unfortunately cause the life of Mr. Pope and get the young Mr. Michaels arrested. Now, Michaels was convicted of causing by death dangerous driving after Chester Crown Court heard he had failed to properly manage his insulin medication, so he had stopped taking his medication. Now, simply because Michaels had gotten off his insulin regimen, he ended up going into a diabetic coma, passing out, and causing this one particular accident that cost a man his life. Nadal was convicted in a sentence to detention in a young offender's institution because he was a young man at the time. He was also disqualified from driving for five years. But this is no isolated case. Kylie Hornich was killed in April when David Herman, a school teacher in Washington County, Oregon, had a diabetic episode while driving and he lost consciousness and drove his car into the front of Hornick's home. Now, Hornick was standing in front of that house, but this was not his first accident. Herman had been involved in an accident in 2007 in which he crashed into a tree after having a diabetic episode while driving. So as I told you before, this is not a particular disease that you want to be driving or use heavy equipment. Now, in Madison County, Mississippi, a man with a blood sugar level of 600 drove from a great distance before receiving medical attention, causing numerous accidents on a highway, as captured through a policeman's dash cam and reported by a local news story. We give you now that video. Third, suffering from high blood sugar. Three on your signs, David Caddy explains. It's just a normal day on I-55 North in Jackson, or is it? Watch the driver of this gold Ford Taurus. He's all over the road, swerving into adjacent lanes, having several near misses. Come to find out from Madison County authorities, the driver was suffering from high blood sugar. We showed our video to Dr. John Belknap at MEA Clinics, who has seen firsthand the effects of having a high blood sugar. It messes up your ability to think. It makes you confused. Belknap says high blood sugar can impair drivers in several ways. You can also feel fatigue, notice your vision is blurred, to be having numbness and tingling in your hands as well. The driver of the Taurus makes it up through Ridgeland, nearly runs off the road in Madison, and before nearly being rear-ended by a Mustang, he makes it to a gas station in Gluckstadt, where Madison County deputies and paramedics check him out. They tell us he had a blood sugar of 600. Physicians say the normal range is 120. Around 600, there's some serious diabetic conditions that can occur, and usually you're dehydrated at that time and your mental status is getting clouded, you're getting confused, you're having difficulty reacting. The driver suffering from a diabetic reaction is lucky he didn't black out or cause a wreck. Physicians recommend anyone who is behind the wheel and starts feeling the symptoms to pull over and stop. Call 911. If you witness someone driving in this manner, call the authorities like we did. You may be saving more than one life. In Madison County, David Kenny, three... What causes a person to go into a diabetic coma? A diabetic hypersolomar coma is caused by severe dehydration and very high glucose levels, or what is known as hypoglycemia. Events that can lead to high blood sugar or glucose levels include forgotten diabetes medication or insulin, you forget to take it, an infection or illness such as the flu, pneumonia, and now, 
COVID. Now, how long does it take to go into a diabetic coma? For people with type 2 diabetes, a diabetic coma may be caused by either hypoglycemia or very high blood sugar levels called diabetic hypersoma. Now, this is a particular syndrome. That's when your body tries to get rid of extra sugar by passing it to your urine. Over days or weeks, this can cause life-threatening dehydration and eventually a coma. Now, how high does your sugar have to be to go into a diabetic coma, you might be asking. A diabetic coma could happen when your blood sugar gets too high, say 600 uh, milligrams per deciliter or more, causing you to become very dehydrated. These things go hand in hand. Now, it usually affects people with type 2 diabetes that isn't well controlled. Offer your medicine, not monitoring your blood sugar level. Now, the normal range for a person's blood sugar level is 120. So what triggers diabetes in humans? Diabetes is triggered when the pancreas does not perform the job it was designed to do. The pancreas is a large gland located just behind the stomach. It produces insulin, glucogen, and other hormones. Then diabetes occurs when the pancreas does not produce enough insulin or when the body does not use insulin properly, called insulin resistance. If you are a diabetic, or you know of someone in your family that is, the medical emergency they face is on a daily basis. Diabetes can cause a whole range of illnesses. And like I said, if you have somebody in your family, you're used to this. In the same way that diabetes can cause nerve damage to your eyes, feet, and hands, it can also affect your brain by damaging nerves and blood vessels. This can lead to problems with memory, learning, mood shifts, weight gain, hormonal changes, and over time, other serious problems like Alzheimer's disease. Over time, high blood pressure and high blood sugar can damage blood vessels and the nerves that control your heart. People with diabetes are also more likely to have other conditions that raise the heart risk of disease, like high blood pressure increase the force of blood through your arteries and can damage artery walls. So you can have like a cascading effect from one simple disease. Now, the best advice we can offer you in the men's medical moment is to maintain your health, your weight, and your fitness to keep your diabetes at bay. We give you now 10 foods to avoid if you have diabetes from the diabetic care community. Now, processed meats such as bacon, ham, salami, or beef jerky. Now, what's better for you is chicken, turkey, tuna, or hard-boiled eggs. You want to avoid full fatty dairy products, primarily containing saturated fat, which is the bad fat, which increases the risk of heart disease. As well, because higher fatty foods naturally contain more calories, full fat dairy products may contribute to an increased risk of obesity. So you want to replace full fat dairy products with low fat or non-fat dairy products and non-dairy milks, for example, almond or soy milk. Now next, you want to stay away from packaged snacks and processed baked goods. The most packaged pastries, cookies, and cakes are made with refined sugar, refined wheat flour, and unhealthy fats, such as shortening, which is uh, in high trans fats community. Then they also contain a number of chemical ingredients including preservatives and colorings and flavoring agents, as well as carbohydrates and processed uh, foods are usually refined simple carbohydrates which cause rapid spikes in blood sugar and insulin levels. So what you want to do instead, replace packaged snacks and processed baked goods with hummus and vegetables. A handful of almonds or apple slices topped with nut butter. So there's a lot of things you can do. Now something else you might want to avoid, which is called white carbohydrates. The white carbohydrates in white bread, rice, and pasta all have virtually no nutritional value. They can also cause blood sugar uh, spikes and weight gain, as well as increase low density uh, lipotrine cholesterol levels, or what's the bad cholesterol. So replace white carbohydrates with whole grain carbohydrates, such as brown rice uh, and whole grain pastas and breads. Now, another thing you wanna watch out for, just like we showed you the cereal aisle at the beginning of the video. Sweetened breakfast cereals, Breakfast cereals are some of the most commonly consumed processed foods that are high in added sugars. 
In fact, most of them list sugar as the second or third ingredient in that product. Now, starting the day with a high sugar breakfast cereal will spike your blood sugar and insulin levels. Excess consumption of sugar may also increase your risk of obesity, as well as heart disease and cancer. So what you want to do, replace sweetened breakfast cereals with oatmeal, homemade granola, or packaged breakfast cereals that contain little or no added sugar. So obesity and the problem with insulin resistance go hand in hand. Now dried fruits dried uh, are a delicious way to satisfy your appetite and your sweet tooth and they generally contain a, a good amount of fiber but unfortunately they're loaded with sugar. In fact a small box of raisins of 43 grams contains about 25 grams of sugar. A 50 gram serving of dates also contains 25 grams of sugar. So let's replace that. Replace dried fruits with fresh fruits. Grab an apple or a banana for a quick and healthy snack on the go. So actually stay close to the things that are real and not to something that's been dehydrated or packaged. Now french fries, you want to stay away from that because french fries are deep fried in oil that contain unhealthy saturated fats. They are very high in fat and calories. This can pose a number of serious risks, for example, heart disease and obesity. If you eat french fries on a regular basis, french fries may also contain a lot of salt, which can contribute to increased blood pressure. So what we want to do, replace french fries with vegetable sticks or baked sweet potato wedges. It's in the same family. Now higher, uh, something else you might want to cut out, which is higher fat uh, cuts of meat. Meats that are high in fat include beef or pork ribs, prime ribs, ribeye steaks, and beef brisket. A number of studies have shown that consumption of high fat meats, especially red meat, is associated with an increased risk of heart disease and cancer. Replace higher fat cuts of meat with leaner meats, such as chicken or turkey breast, sirloin or eye of round steak, or pork tenderloin, so that way you still get your protein. Now foods with trans fat is what you want to stay away from also, or high amounts of saturated fats. Unlike saturated fats, which help reduce the risk of heart disease and lower cholesterol levels, trans fats and saturated fats have no known benefit to human health. They also increase low density lipotrine cholesterol, which is the bad cholesterol, and decrease high density uh, cholesterol, or the good cholesterol. Now common foods that contain trans fats or saturated fats include cakes, pies, donuts, cookies of course, and especially when they have frosting, uh, crackers, potato chips, fried fast foods, and frozen pizza. Everything we love to eat, right? So what we can do, we replace a lot of that stuff. You replace those foods with high levels of trans fat and saturated fats with foods that contain natural sources of vegetable fats, such as nuts and seeds or avocados, and foods that contain omega-3 fatty acids such as salmon, tuna, or mackerel. There's nothing better than jack mackerel. So, another category you want to take out, sugary foods. Everyone craves sugary foods at some point, whether it's chocolate, cake, or candy. However, foods that are high in added sugar usually contain no protein or fiber, so it can cause your blood sugar levels to spike quickly and then drop sharply. Now, sugary foods are also associated with increased weight gain when eaten. So, to replace those, replace sugary foods with fresh fruit, yogurt, and berries, or homemade healthy ice cream. If you can't do that and don't know how to make it, go to YouTube. There are plenty of videos on how to make ice cream. If you do have diabetes, being active makes your body more sensitive to your own body's insulin. Now the hormone that uh, allows cells in your body to use blood sugar for energy, which helps manage your diabetes. So physical activity also helps control blood sugar levels and lowers your risk of heart disease and nerve damage. So you have to not only eat healthy, but you have to get up. Eating unhealthy foods can have a number of effects on the body, including weight gain, high blood pressure, high blood sugar levels, and in many cases there are healthy options to replace unhealthy foods. So we're going to give you, in closing, just a few exercises for diabetics, which is walking, yoga, swimming, and a few more. So you might want to do cycling, uh, team sports, aerobic dance, a little bit of weightlifting, resistance band exercise, and calisthenics. So, in closing, the men's medical moment, 
uh, advise you to stay safe and monitor your blood sugar levels. And if you have the uh, medication that the doctor gave you for your particular diabetes, take it. We'll see you again next time.